This video was brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Make a pledge today for early access to content, scripts, uncut audio recordings, and you might even get a video request. More patrons means polls, exclusive videos, updates, and more. So join the Haunted House today for as little as a dollar a month. Cheers. The story of Life Revived is a narrative that stems way back in human history, the clearest of which is in the New Testament, where Jesus revives the corpse of Lazarus after being dead for four days. As most will know, things don't end well for Jesus after that, and thus we have a tragic ending for those that mess with human nature. This tragedy is probably what makes this tale survive so fervently in culture, and has been reproduced in art by Caravaggio, Rembrandt, and Van Gogh. It is no surprise, therefore, that it would find itself in a Doctor Who episode, which we'll be analysing today to see if it was worth re-watching after all. The Doctor takes Martha home and, as if by magic, her phone rings for two beeps before going straight to the answer machine. I think we can safely assume that Martha has some kind of mystical powers, enabling her to know somebody is calling before the phone even rings. Annoyingly, too, the phone just directs Martha to... Oh god, they're watching TV again. Predictably, the Doctor leaves and then comes back again, which is a shame because his returning line is cheesy AF. By the way, did I mention it also travels in time? Then we get to see Mark Gattis in some dreadful makeup. He stood right next to an actress that's over 30 years older than him, making the makeup look a bit off. The show prepares us for an action fest to come by comparing the Doctor to James Bond, which was nice. It was so cute seeing the Doctor fumble his way around Martha's family. He's still so out of depth socially when it comes to families, making it sound like the pair had a fun time playing around with her laundry. The dramatics of the experiment itself are a bit OTT, but it was interesting to see women operating the scientific equipment that would make this experiment happen. Lazarus's affinity for young attractive women seems to be expanded to the point that all his staff are female just so he can smell their soap. Lazarus then comes out of the machine, and the way this moment is edited gives off the impression that he had more dialogue that was cut out. He's first addressing the audience, and in the next shot his arms are outstretched. I think it is also worth praising the fact that this is our first episode where Harold Saxon's influence is made more apparent. It's interesting that this ageing machine would later be harnessed to create the opposite effect on the Doctor in the series finale. It was cool seeing the Doctor and Martha questioning Lazarus with healthy scepticism, but are bounced back by the greed of Mrs. Thor and confirmation bias of Lazarus. He will ignore his saviour's advice at his peril. The pair then go to a lab to check out Lazarus's DNA. No security stop them or anything like that, and then things start going a little bit wrong. I appreciated this theme of the old being naively ignored by the young, and it was great to see survival instincts kicking in once Mrs. Thor suggested that she'd need to protect her investment. Unfortunately, the way this transformation is filmed is so tacky that I couldn't help but laugh at it. It starts with these bizarre zooms of Mark Gattis rolling around on the floor, followed by these horribly dated point of view shots. It's all pretty disgusting in the most BBC fashion you could possibly imagine, and the pinnacle of which was seeing Mark's tongue being as yellow as his hair. Lazarus then grabs Martha's sister for a bit of rooftop naughtiness that's stopped by the Doctor and Martha. It certainly feels like Lazarus is a worthy antagonist, it's just a shame he has to transform into a giant CGI monster, probably egged on by the BBC. The Doctor has one of my favourite lines of his here about the quality of life being more important than the length of it, and it becomes an interesting little conversation because the Doctor is actually cursed by the longevity of his existence. A human that bears that power might not see these possibilities for the long run. Immortality doesn't cure boredom or suffering, but can in fact exacerbate them. Unfortunately, the moment Tish steps away from Lazarus, the guy starts doing his spasmic dance, dance. behind her, and I just started laughing again. Because this was when the real fun began. I was just cringing throughout the attack in the main lab. I appreciated a couple of shots of food being thrown onto the floor. Those must have been fun to film, but I can't imagine the rest being very enjoyable. There are lots of quick edits to disorient the viewer, and then the scorpion bent it like Beckham. Good effort! Brilliant go! 
Oh! And then there was the olive woman. Don't be ridiculous. The biggest danger here is choking on an olive. Who just stands there transfixed by the monster. This extra does such a poor job of being petrified. And then, of course, the off-screen death just induced cringe to the max. I'll grant them that it was a good choice not letting this creature do any talking, but it also creates this vacuum on screen with the doctor insulting it in these awful points of view shots. He's chased by the monster into this corridor where my disbelief extended further when it crawled up the walls. Why would it intentionally slow itself down when it had the clearest shot of getting the doctor then and there? We then get to this room of pipes and machinery. Remember I was saying it was good the creature doesn't talk? Well, I take it right back because the bastard started waffling on about progress and inevitability. Meanwhile, Martha tries getting everybody out of the building they're all sealed into. This scenario just boggles the mind. Where are all the staff? Security? Assistants? Apparently, they're running a skeleton crew at the science lab that makes people younger, with Martha and the doctor having to do everything themselves. It's not funny, Martha. The doctor then blows up a science lab for a shot in the next time trailer, and apparently this was done by filling the room with gas and then flicking a light switch? I'm no scientist, so if somebody could explain to me how this might have happened, I'd greatly appreciate it. Either way, it's stupid because the Lazarus monster comes out of that room completely untouched by the fire and looks just as ridiculous as before. The pair wind up back in the main room and lock themselves inside the de-aging machine. Incredibly, the sonic screwdriver comes to the rescue once again. Need people to get out of a building? Just sonic a machine. Need to stun a monster? Just sonic the machine. After seeing Mark Gattis's naked body, the pair reunite with Martha's family. Francine slaps him because she got told things. Oh yeah, now's probably a good time to mention that random stranger that Francine has no problem accepting a drink from. It's unfortunate that we had the whole suspicious mother thing with Jackie Tyler before and now is being repeated here, made worse by the fact she just believed whatever this posh boy whispered in her ear. The main issue for me is that the Doctor being dangerous is sort of self-evident and just being in this episode would have given Francine a negative impression of him. A man Martha met supposedly yesterday is now fighting a gigantic monster, of course she'd be concerned. The Doctor had a nice quip about Lazarus being revived from the dead. Lazarus, back from the dead. Should learn, Ray. And from there, things just got kind of shit again. They make their way to the cathedral Lazarus was harping on about earlier, where the Doctor and he basically have the same conversation they had in the lab. Him cracking and creaking just lost its shock value when it kept interrupting him every 10 seconds, and then the girls lure him up to the bell tower. The sonic screwdriver once again saves the day by deafening Lazarus and making him fall from the tower. The Doctor acts as a sensor bar for Mark's naked body again, and I can't help but wonder what makes this moment so different from when he quote-unquote died at the lab. Frustratingly, he just closes Lazarus's eyes and that's it. They jump into the TARDIS on their merry way. Isn't the guy just gonna wake up from the dead and rain havoc on humanity again? How irresponsible. So, did it suck? Man, the only memorable thing about this episode is the outdated CGI and a couple of good quotes from the Doctor. The characterization of Lazarus is good, David is good, a few interesting bits of dialogue pop up here and there, and that's about it. It's edited rather badly too, probably because of the big unconvincing monster, and how the sonic screwdriver just saves them at every moment of danger felt like a bit of a cop-out. The ending is frustrating, and it's another one of these episodes where it honestly would wouldn't have mattered if it never happened. I give the Lazarus experiment a 3 out of 10. Thanks for watching. I didn't think I'd be doing this again this soon, but here we go. And they're in alphabetical order this time. A big personal thank you from me to the following patrons. And I do apologize if I butcher any name pronunciations. Adam Busby, Adam Gadsby, Aileen, Alec Millwood, Alex, Alex Hawker, Alex Holmes, Alex Jones, Alex Midget, Alexander Cooper, Alfie Butler, A Lonely Guy, Amy Stott, Anastasia Green, Andrew Hart, Andrew Jenkins, Andy, Andy, Annie Cross, Aziz Daham, Bailey Robinson, 
Robinson, Ben Hazen, Ben Jacob Kearns, Ben Pritchard, B. Po2797, Billy, Blake, Blake Colon, Bob Sturr, Bonnie Can, Brandon Saunders, Brock Waters, Cecil, Charlie Braddock, Chloe Hamid, Chris Balderston, Christopher Kirtley, Claire Chadwick, Clone Wars 131, Connor Pape, Cormac Corrigan, Craig Young, Dan Milnes, Daniel Bouchard, Daniel Powell, Daniel Shalito, David Howard, David Gerald Highland, Davis Tooniverse Gaming, Declan Ferber, Dennis Malema, Douglas Somerville, Dr. Bag PhD, Ira, Ethan Oldwinkle, Ethan Chudnicki, Ethan Flavel, Evan Balfour, Filippo Depot, Finley, Finn, Fowey Sense, Gerald Gompoltsberger, Grady Cashin, Greg Links 5, Grizzly Bear Vapes, Hannah Kennedy, Hannah Simmons, Haruki, Hazardous Harry, Hollow Spider, Holly Richards, Hugh Bettinson, Ian Evans, Invisible Watch, Iron Jalapeno, Jack Belgin, Jack G, Jack Lawler, Jack Sims, James, James Zipney Miles, James Carr, James Chudnicki, James Coxall, James Kiddy, Jamie, Jason Glennie, Jasper Cowley Grimmond, J. Berry, Joe Kim Headland, Joe B. 1849, Joel Handy, Joseph Silver, Josh White, Joshua, Joshua Barkley, Joshua Norman, Kai King, Katality, Karen K, Kaz is Invalid, <laughs> Kieran Murray, Kieran O'Leary, Kranitoko, Kyle Quinnell, Luckland Brown, Lou, Lewis Blackmore, Lexi Davidson, Liam Thomas, Liam Turner, Lickle Mel, Linus Shaw, Live Hedgehog, Local Filthy Maid, Lord Zylock, Louis Fellows, Lucio Bertacci Moroni, Luke Heptonstall, Mark Lewis, Matt B, Matt Hill, Matthew Gash, Matthew Lima, Matthew Thomas, Max Kidd, Max 9874, Mia Giles, Michael, Milan, Miles Ridley, Monkey Man Hybrid, Monty Dyson, Natasha Watmore, Nathan Oswald, Newcastle Fan 2018, Ashley Fenner, Nick Brewer, Nikki Beckett, Oliver Dilks, Override Underscore, Panicked Pikachu, Pat Patrick Mayer, Peaceful Dawn, Peter, Peter Ong, Pinny Skenis, Rager O'Drakir, Red Arch Alive, Ren0409, Rennie Renster, Reese B, Reese Forgan, Robbie Cathcart, Robbie McKay, Robert Parry Jones, Ross Alexander, Rue Rosie, Ryan Deeth, Ryan Dishon, Raimi Massett, Sam, Sam Ashwood, Sam Caderito, Sam Nelson, Sam Roger, Sam Jimarenyi, Sanna, Scalamunga, Sean Thompson, Simon Grierson, Sonic Meerkat, Sonny Galligan, Steve Carr, T. Warriner, Thomas Backhouse, Thomas Matthews, Ermax, Vegas Hill, Wesley McKee, Whipper, Will Hughes, Will Sumners, William Love, Wisher God, Xanthia George, Zed, and Zach Pernell. What do you think of this episode? Leave a comment below or join us for a Benny on the Discord server, where we'll continue this discussion.